Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make shadow box center stepper cards. So these are really nice because you can put flowers in there, decoupage in there, you can even turn them into shaker boxes if you add acetate to the front so you can put things inside of it and then give them a little shake. You can have your decoupage to build it all up, all sorts of things that you can put into these and it's just a really nice little thing to do. You're going to have about half inch depth there so you just need to make a box envelope or anything like that to go with it. This is using Hunky Dory cardstock in a full A4 and I'll tell you the measurements of that one right at the end. This one is cut down to 8 by 11 um, but I'm going to be showing you with A4 cut to 8 and a quarter by 11 but it's absolutely fine to use 8 and a half by 11 or 8 and a quarter by 11, 8 by 11. They're about the three sizes that you'd want to do so that should cover all areas. And I'm going to get started and show you how to do that. So first of all, what we need to do is take some cardstock and a paper trimmer. So I've, I've got a paper trimmer. Now, if you haven't got a paper trimmer, you can measure and you can use a craft knife and a ruler to cut it. So all, I'm going to just turn it up the other way because I, oh, I don't know, I can still see it that way. We'll do it this way. No, I will turn it the other way. And I'll tell you why, because the ruler, I've got the one inch start in there and I need that tell me so if you don't have a paper trimmer what you're going to do is you're going to measure down one inch and measure in one and a half and put a pencil dot and I do this on the back of the card one and a half inches in one inch down pencil dot then one and a half inches and six and a half down pencil dot and you're going to cut a line between the two but for me it's easier to use a paper trimmer so we'll just get going on that one so just start here at one which is there all the way down to six and a half which is there I'm going to flip it over just to save it get an extender out coming at one and a half on this side and because I'm already at six and a half here what I'll do is cut back to the one so just one to six and a half two cut lines is all you require and that's all the cutting for now that we need to do on that bit now then we need to bring in our scoreboard so inches side, <clears throat> excuse me, I just knocked something over. And then what we're going to do is turn it around the other way so we've got our inch at this end, okay? So score at one down to the cut line, score at two down to the cut line, and then at the bottom, one up to the cut line, and then two up to the cut line, and then six and a half down. So it's going to be where the cut line starts and finishes. It's going to go one, then one more. So one, two, and then six and a half here, and six and a half here. This is why I put lines on my scoreboards, so that I can see where the half inch marks are. So just make sure that they're scored nicely. And then the only other thing we've got to do, so this is 11, half of 11 is five and a half. But I, want to, I don't want to cut score it in half because I want a depth box. I'm going to go a quarter of an inch either side. So I'm just going to guide myself down. And you could do that. Don't score it though. You only make your score between the cuts. So at five and a quarter, just guide myself down. Five and three quarters. Okay. There are score lines that we need to do. So I'm just going to remove the scoreboard. And we're going to reinforce those now. So it's going to be a mountain and a valley and then a mountain on the outside, mountain, valley, mountain. And then these two are going to be mountains in the middle. So just be careful how you do these. That's the first one. I like to turn it over and just push against it like that so that they're coming round like so. And just give them a little extra help. And then we're just going to pull it all down and keep those forward like that and give it a little squash. We can reinforce all of these end lines and underneath the insides. We've got a little score there and the top one. And pull this one forward, give that another crease. Just makes it lay flatter. And then be careful with this one that you don't upset your um, cardstock. Like that. So we've now got our card base. So we've got our centre stepper. So you could leave it like that if you didn't want to make the aperture and you've got a box, but You'd, if you were going to do that, then just put the half inch mark there and not do the ones other side. Score it at five and a half. <clears throat> Excuse me. Score it at five and a half and then don't put these 
the other side of the five and a half mark and it would be flat then you can fold it flat so there's two ways to make this then we're going to open it back up now you can use any frames you like i'm going to use a pre-made frame but you can obviously use die cuts and if you do use a die cut when you do the center section now what you would do is just run it through your machine so put your frame onto your card where you want it to be and then you can use a pencil i'm just going to use a pen so you can see it because you won't see a pencil just line it up now you can measure it if you want it to be accurate but because i've got spots on this one i can sort of see where they go so you go in like that and then you put your die cut on the drawing that you've done you're only and don't worry about going over because the frame's going to cover up any mistakes you do with the pen and the center part gets cut away so don't worry about any of that oops like that don't worry about it <laughs> it's because it's a flimsier frame so have i done the bottom I'm not sure i'll do it again just in case so that gives us where our aperture is going to go so you would lay your um frame over that your die cut and then run it through the machine and you've got your aperture or you can use a craft knife and a ruler or you can bring your paper trimmer back in which is what i'm going to do and just cut around it now you cut just on the outside of those lines so i want it to be just outside and you don't want it to go any further than the measurement of the depth of your frame the width of your frame because you see that one there if i'd gone any further out what would happen is you would see a hole in the frame and the frame would have nothing to adhere to so you don't want to go any further than that and just spin it around and cut the other sides i'm just going to start where i was come outside of it a little bit you do want to go outside of it a little bit and just go up to the next bit and past it a little bit spin it around the same with this bottom one that side and up there and then finally the last one so hopefully I've, I've not quite gone enough but we can fix that in a second and then come down to this one go outside <clears throat> not too much so about the coffin i've got a bit of asthma today playing me up so just here i'm just gonna take my scissors cut that corner off just to get rid of this and then i'll make it good in a minute and then this one just pull it out you're not going to see this part because you've gone a little bit that's why you go a little bit bigger so if there's any mistakes or anything like that you don't see them you just cut that off and down to there Okay, still haven't got enough. I'm trying to show you, but it's difficult. I could do with it under my nose. <laughs> yeah, don't want to come out that bit, does it? Playing up. So we now have got an aperture in our card. So, like I say, you can die cut that out, <clears throat> whatever you prefer to use. And then what we do, you see, is we put our frame back over it, and you don't get to see anything that you've done. And I'll do that now actually and let it dry. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue just to the very close edge of here. So that nasty little corner that I cut, it won't get seen in a minute. It's going along here. Thanks to everyone that subscribed as well to my channel. Brilliant. Thank you very much. If you haven't already, please do so. And if you hit the notification bell, You'll be advised when I add new videos and I've got lots and lots of ideas to show you of all different genres of crafting. I just mostly paper though because I love paper craft. I love how you can take a flat piece of paper and turn it into something completely different. It just amazes me. We're going to put that on, try and centralise it and obviously use a pencil like I said on the wrong side of the card and you won't end up with a pen all over your card. So just rub that down like that. And you'll see on the back it overhangs onto the inside and that's good because you're not seeing all these nasty corner cuts that i did so just set that aside to dry now what we need to do is make our shadow box and i'm going to use a contrasting color now the measurements for your shadow box if you work out what your top size is this one is four inches but i'm going to go it's not quite four inches but i'm going to make it four inches and i believe it's square yep so four inches square now what i need to do is add half an inch for the depth and then half an inch for the fixture so it's one inch each side 
so I've got two inches. So I've got my four plus two is six, so I need to cut my square to six by six. Then I need my scoring board back. And I'm going to score at a half and one with my tools. A half and one on all four sides. If you've seen me doing this before, I always like turning my card and doing it. Save me remembering four measurements because they're going to be the same on all of the side, four sides. They're just half and one. We're going to reinforce those scores. Reinforce means just fold it over. The shadow box comes in like this. So the first one they're going to come in like that. And then the outer bit comes back. So this one goes back. So turn your cardstock over and fold the top outer ones back like that. And that's how that's going to become a shadow box. And then we just need to make some cuts. So you're going to cut out the three squares on the outside. So that's there, there, and then you have to go in and cut two. I don't know why, it won't get out of my hair, but I feel like it reminds me of Tetris. <laughs> and if you remember the game Tetris, <laughs> for some reason I was thinking, especially like where you've got the three squares missing. <laughs> and then you just need to make a tab. So just cut along there and I always like to do that to my tab just so it doesn't affect the shape of the box going wrong. And I'll also do it on the other side. So you just need to have tabs on each of the corners. So you're going to cut again, you're going to cut in. And we'll cut all the way down because we are going to make a tab there. I'll make them all in the same place. Doesn't matter actually where you put the tabs. Come down there. Can't seem to cut today. <clears throat> and then that section little bit of shaping on the tabs like that again up here all the way down two and cut along there that one take that one off there and there Like I said, I'm going to show you how to do a full A4 at the end. And I can tell you that in centimetres and then we can work out the inches together as well. My ruler shows both. But like I say, eight and a half, cut them down to 11, eight and a half, eight and a quarter, all right. Doesn't matter, they're all going to fit. They're all going to work for this. Just make sure your frame isn't bigger than the bit in the centre. So there's all our little pieces gone. So we've now got this shape. That we need so we can really reinforce that now there 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 and there and then we need to make a box so to make the box the tabs are going to just go around like that so i'll use wet glue but just for speed i'm just going to um put some tape on there so you put it on the right side so if this was a double-sided card and that was your inside picture and have it facing up and just put some tape and I'm only using a little tiny bit so I hope it's going to hold <clears throat> definitely definitely use wet glue but you can also put a bit of red liner if you don't like using wet glue and you can use both too you can use this tape and then add a drop of, drop of glue when I use this tape it's so small it's difficult to get the liner off you rub it down hard, it does make it a little bit easier. I think I'll go and take all of these off. Not going to work. <laughs> yeah, maybe wet glue then. I think that's just the fibrous of this card. I'm going to pop another bit on there because that bit's a bit ruined. Doesn't want to stick, does it? I'm going to have to get some red liner, I think, because this cardstock does not like this tape. Now I'm going to pull these off and get some different tape. I'll just use wet glue. Just drop a bit of red liner on there then. It's going to play me up that much. There we go. 
little teeny bit. <clears throat> that one's got a bit on it, so we'll leave that one. Ah, don't normally happen with my tape, but there you go. It must be this cardstock that doesn't like that tape. That's why you always need loads of different adhesives. Let's take this off. There you go. Red liner sticks to anything, doesn't it? She says. That's amused. There we go. And finally, that one. Now we can make our box shape. So you just fold it around to the outside. So wherever the tab is, just bring those two together to make the box and then fold it around and push it down. Same with these, fold it around and push it down. And then you can see you've got your box shape. So now what happens is you've got your card. Let's grab my card in the frame. And you can see that that's gonna sit nicely in there like so this one's come undone again definitely need some wet glue don't i okay so now i'm going to use wet glue because this cardstock doesn't like anything else and it gives me wiggle time as well to get this in place just run some wet glue along there and i'm using the pin flare book binding glue which i adore just smear it my smearing tool is my baby finger, always, because don't tend to use it for anything else, so it doesn't tend to get glue on anything. So you can hover this over and get that to go in the right place. Alternatively, you can turn it over, because you know where you're going. You can see your corners, and just line it up. You're gonna have to do this at the end anyway to rub it down and get your box in place like that. Now if you wanted to and you don't like that look, you can make a frame to go all the way around, but it is on the back of the card. And then you've got your lovely shadow box, which you can still shift, like that bit's showing a bit, so we can push that back that way a bit. And you can see you've got your shadow box all in place to put something in. Now, if you wanted acetate, you would cut acetate a bit bigger and put that on first before you put your box on. So I don't know if I can move the box to show you. It's probably, no, it's taken already. But you would just put a bit of tape around the outside of the aperture that you've cut, lay some acetate on it, then re-glue this. So that's how you do that. So now I'm just going to go through the measurements with you. Let's push that one out a bit. On the A4. So on this A4 one, I don't think I can remember them off by heart, but I think it's two and a half. So on a full A4 sheet, which is eight and a quarter by 11 and three quarters, I measured it at two and a half and then five. So two and a half and then five for that one. And then that would have been 17 and a half. So two and a half, five, 17 and a half. And I came in at four each side. So from two and a half to 17 and a half, you make your cut four centimeters in. And then this section, I went 14 and a half to 15 and a half, so it's a centimetre. But if you wanted, if you have A4 and you wanted the inches side, if you did one and two and then six and three quarters and five and three quarters and six, I think, you'd probably be able to work it out like that. So there you go, but centimetres is the way I did this one, like I said. So it's two and a half and five and seventeen and a half on the outside. You're cutting from two and a half to seventeen and a half and fourteen and a half and fifteen and a half between the line, the cut lines for your score lines for the centre. And then it all depends on your aperture. This was a different size. So you work out your aperture. So that was like eight by nine. So I probably did it in centimetre depth. So two on top of that, two on top of that. So if it was eight, you're going to need 10. By nine, you're going to need another four on there, so 13. And that's what you cut down to make your box at the back. I hope that you all understand that. So thanks, guys, for watching, and have a great day. Bye.